Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock. I'm an artist and today I'm going to be talking about using very limited color selections and making some really amazing looking images from them by just combining a little something something extra along with them. And I'll be working on the bear and the dog in two different marker brands. And these are both available on my website if you want to go get them and try them yourself with this technique. But I want to show you the inspiration for how I got here. I found my old Copic Jumpstart notebook from 2016. It has all the original stuff that was in the videos, all the color wheels. Well, there seems to be one color wheel missing, but anyway, there's a whole bunch of color wheels in the class, different blending exercises. And the thing that I got really excited about was remembering how few colors I had used in this class, because what I did was show you how to use glazing to create new colors. And this whole system of figuring that out is what you can learn in the class. And then I got to this page and I was mortified, absolutely mortified. These are terrible drawings. I apologize for years of people using those in the lessons. So I have redrawn them. They're in the lessons right now. You can go and download them and color them up with the same instruction, but they're much cuter. Oh my gosh, insanely much cuter. They're more like... I try to make them like stuffed animal-ish so that they're still cute, but they're still simple because that was the point originally. I wanted something really simple for very beginning colorists. And this I think is just gonna be a whole lot more fun to color and work with <laughs> instead of those ugly ones. But now you can see why I did a bear and a dog. I didn't include the turtle in this particular video, but bear and the dog are coming right up. There was other things that brought me to the place where I'm at in this video right now. One is that I made a hexagon sketchbook. I bought one on Etsy and it had like drawing paper in it and they don't make them anymore. So I can't go ask her if she'd make me one. So I followed a sea lemon tutorial and I actually learned how to do the stitching that's underneath that binding. I like actually got needle and thread out, but boy, my trimming was off. It just looks terrible, but I'm going to draw in it anyway, because this is on Nina cardstock, which I like for alcohol markers. This drawing was the thing that really got me going though, because in this drawing, I used three reds and three yellows. My kind of go-to red combo and my go-to yellow combination. And then I added neutrals to them and then added more of the colors. And I just kind of went back and forth until I got the result that I wanted. This one, of course, does not use that technique because there's not much neutral in there except for the land at the bottom. That was my backyard a few days ago. And this one was just kind of fun playing with a whale tail. But this one, you can see, led to the bear. The grass is not yet done. I'm hoping to finish that soon. And the bear originally was all the colors that are in the snout. And that did not look right. It just looked like there was like a spotlight on the bear and I needed to neutralize it so it would look like he was out at night. And this one, I wanted it to feel like he was a brown bear with shadow on him. But in the one that I'm going to draw for you, that's going to be a black bear and that sort of thing. So if you're interested in this sketchbook, though, since the company doesn't make it anymore, the gal on Etsy, I have also learned how to make an easier one. And I'll show you this on Saturday because there's something special coming. So you'll want to stay tuned for that. But there's no stitching in this. It's just some trimming and some uh, very, very simple gluing. So yay for that. Now, the next step for me was going through my old blending list that I came up with in 2016 and deciding on what are my current colors? What do I want if I were to come up with my own blending trios list? And this is kind of it. Some of them don't have much difference between the colors, like, you know, going from light to dark and others have a vast difference. They go from very, very light to very, very dark. And it's because the intent is to be able to combine them with other colors because I know how these colors work. And if you're interested in this, it's for sale over on my website. If you want that one, I'm going to be using it over the coming months. So I'll tell you a couple of the combinations as I do that, as I'm going to do today as well. But you can see some of them are fairly similar. Some of them are not. And it's all about my intended use in my brain for what I wanted to use these colors for. I had something specific in mind. 
doesn't mean these are the only color combinations. It doesn't mean you'll pick up these markers and suddenly you'll be a whiz at blending because yeah, that's not really my jam. I am more of a messy colorist, but I like to do realism and that's what um, these kind of colors are going to do for me. Anyway, I picked one of the combinations and the combination is in, uh, this one is in Copic. The other one will be in Olo and this one is in E42, E44 and E49. E49 is the darkest of the browns and I chose this combination because it's going to be a black bear and I didn't really need any white in it necessarily. So I wanted a color that was going to darken it right away. So I covered it all with the uh, the lightest color and then went in with my darkest brown. You can see how big the contrast is. If you're trying to blend these two colors, it'll never happen. You need something in between. But I'm not worried about the blending of these because this is the underpainting. And I say underpainting not because I'm like trying to be snooty and say everything is painting, but literally like all different mediums use the word underpainting. And I just want to start using that with alcohol markers because it's just as much of a valid art option as anything else. And I just want to start using art words with it. So anyway, underpainting, achieve it however you wish. If you're going to use this technique of adding neutrals to it, because really the idea is to get the values established in this under layer. For a bear, I could do the same thing in blues. I could do the same thing in purples and then do the neutrals over top of it and still have something perfectly wonderful. But in this case, I just thought I'd start with a brown so that you could see two of my brown combinations in these two animals. So I'm using the E44, the mid-tone color, just kind of going around the edges. Notice that I did leave a little light color around the outside edge of the bear. And I've talked about that before. It's called bounced light. And it helps to define shapes. So like on the right side of the head, I've left some. And around the left side, like if he's up against a you know, black or dark blue sky and you use a really dark color on that left side, you're going to end up not being able to see the difference between the two. But now I'm going in with my neutrals and for each color combination and each subject sometimes, I have to check and see, okay, which is the best of the grays to use? And sometimes just a scrap of paper is gonna really help with that decision. But here I'm using a C5 to try to get just the, the main image covered so that it's gonna feel more like a black bear with kind of some shimmery brown highlights shining through. because. You know, black bears can have browns, they can have purples, they can have blues, all different kinds of colors. And then switching to a C7. So depending on, like I said, the image, if it's not a really dark image like this, you're not going to use a C7 for it. You're going to use something lighter. And if you're using a color combination that doesn't go really dark, then maybe your darks are going to come from your neutrals instead of coming from the colors. But here I wanted that underpainting to carry the contrast and you can really still see underneath of it all that brown the contrast in it is still there I'm still getting the form of the bear because I have all that color underneath and the the grays on top in you know switching back and forth I think it was a, a number four that I also pulled in um, to do some lightening because you can use a lighter gray to pull color out in something like this and so I just kind of bounced back and forth between them depending on which area I was working on, whether I was trying to darken or lighten. And there's a little bit of that brown still being seen in here, but the main thing you get is like the idea that this is a black bear. This is not just a brown bear at night, which is where the sketchbook went because I didn't work at it. I could have probably put more grays in it and made him a black bear at night. And maybe I'll do that as I finish the rest of the drawing because the grass needs to uh, definitely be fixed. But this one looks very much like a black bear, but it's got more life to it than just using grays by themselves. And here I'm just adding the same colors, the, the E44 and uh, E42 to the snout to give that some... Uh, some color and then put a shadow under them. If the light's coming from the right, the shadow will go off to the left. 
in the drawing that you would download, the eyes, the white of the eyes is really big. And I did that on purpose because on a lighter bear, you might want to have more of that white showing. And on a darker bear like this one, you might want to shrink it down because he looks a little psycho if his eyes are too, too big, if that, that white dot is too large. So now I'm turning to my Olos for another coloring for the dog and trying to figure out what I want to do. The body I want to have white and then I also want to have some spots on it in color. So I'm using one that has a lighter first color to it that I can use in combination with the others to start making the differences in the different shapes. And so I'm just going to put some of this color in, in the places where there would be shadows, same lighting, I'm not going to adjust that in this particular coloring, same lighting as the bear. And just kind of a quick smattering of color in here, which will change as we go. The color here is, uh, the, the color trio is yellow, orange, 2.0, 2.5 and 2.7. And you might notice they have the same letters and the same first digit, just like the E4s in the bear had the same first digit. That is a natural blending group. Not all the ones on my list are natural blending groups. Just some of them are. Some of them I just kind of went with what I went with. And here I'm trying to get a little difference in the color in the highlight side on the right side of the dog and the shadow side on the left, but there's not a huge difference in them right now. There's just a small difference. So for the time being, I'm just gonna start putting color into the white because I needed to define those areas. And I did that by starting with a little bit of the dark color, a little bit of the medium color to just soften out the edges and create some shadow shapes, like under the chin and on the left side of the dog's legs, that sort of thing. And when that area is further softened with the lightest of the three colors in the trio, then it starts changing the tone of it because lighter colors always eat away at darker colors underneath of them. It's why sometimes blending is hard because you're trying to put light color over darker colors, midtones, and they're always going to act a little bit like a colorless blender. So they have enough light, whatever it is in the alcohol inks, that they're gonna pull color out. And I counted on that when I put all that dark color inside. So I wanted to see what would happen if I put a second coat of the brown, the darker brown. And it does give me some contrast and separation here. And before I went and added in any of the neutrals, I wanted to at least try this much of it and then put the facial features in so I'd know what I'm dealing with before starting to add more deep dark shadow. Every time you see a color or a value, it's in relation to everything around it. So I wanted to get the general values right and I just wanted more color on that chest. So I added a bit more to that. And next I also wanted to add the facial features because, you know, animals and people look psycho when they don't have eyes and noses. So I used blue for the eyes. I know only huskies generally have blue eyes, but this dog's going to have blue eyes because I can, and that's just how it's going to be. And then put some black on the inside. Now I left the eyes open so you can make them turn left. You can make them turn right. You can make them look up or down. You can do what you want with yours. And then I started in with a mid-tone in the gray, like a number five, and that didn't really give me much contrast. So I tried a seven in a few of these areas, just a little swipe, just a little touch, and got huge contrast. That, that was what I was wanting. I wanted that significant difference. And so I just put it in a few strategic areas, because remember, this is a dark, this is a very dark color. I don't want it to take over. But Next, I need to start blending some of that out. So then I used a, this one is a warm gray this time, and I switched over to a number four so that I wouldn't end up getting too much color in there. I still wanted that nice light brown kind of colors to show through as like that's the color of the spots of the dog instead of making everything go gray like I did on the bear. And this time I also opted to put, you know, like some dogs have like eyeliner around them. I did that with the markers so that I could have the option to soften them. And so I did that a little bit with the um, brown colors and stuff around the outside edges, but that just ended up feeling like it was getting really dark. So I could lighten it though, using the lighter of the brown colors and just pull some color out of it 
if, if need be. Now I also wanted to add some whiskers to it. I used a pencil, just a graphite pencil, and these are a little on the strong side. I'll show you in a minute how you can uh, tone those down so that they look a lot more natural on the drawing. But just kind of running around fussing with different areas to make sure that I get a sort of even contrast across all of it. If there's not any areas that look like they're untouched, that sort of thing, like the tail just looked like it needed a little help. And then I'm adding a shadow. I'm leaving a little gap in between the back foot and the front foot and uh, that sort of thing to get a shadow that looks a little more realistic. And then it's gonna blend off to the left. A kneaded eraser will lift off that pencil quite nicely so that it just barely sits there like a whisker really would. And if you press really hard on that pencil line when you draw it, you end up getting something that looks like whisker pockets. You know, it's just a little darker at the start. So let's recap the changes to Alcohol Marker Jumpstart or Copic Jumpstart. The class, if you've bought it already, you don't have to do anything extra. The goodies are all there for you. If you've linked to the class from somewhere, you know, on your blog or something, the link still works. It'll fast forward to the current link. Everything will be fine. Secondly, if you want to get those three new images, the replacement, really simple bear and turtle and dog, those are available in the classroom in the same place as the old ones. There's now new ones there as well. And this drawing, which I'm coloring right now, used to be at the end of the class and it said Copic Jumpstart. Now it says alcohol marker jumpstart. You can color the markers, whatever color your brand of marker is, because that's kind of fun. And then I want to invite you, if you're interested in either taking the class again, you know, kind of going through the lessons and refreshing your brain, uh, or if you're going to do it for the first time in September, I always promote jumpstart classes because, you know, the kids are going back to school. We should go learn something too. So I always like seeing people take on a new medium or something. What I want to do is go through the alcohol marker jumpstart class as if I'm a student, do the lessons, do the charts, you know, kind of reintroduce myself to that content and see, is there anything else that I want to change? Uh, that kind of stuff. And I'm going to redo samples. So there's some card samples that are in there and I want to freshen those up and do something new. If you would like to do that with me, then join our adventure and we'll be just sharing throughout the month of September the stuff that we're doing and learning and you know refreshing. So if you're going through it again, you're welcome to do that with me. And that is about it for me today. I hope that you will follow along on Instagram because you're going to see some more alcohol marker coloring as I start to fill in this crazy hexagonal sketchbook of mine. I just want to use it so I can put it on the shelf and call it done because it's an embarrassing mess, but it's, it's good paper. So good paper is a good thing to use to make art. Anyway, I will see you guys on Saturday. Don't forget to set your alarm. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.